Hello and welcome to today's anatomy and physiology topic. We're going to be looking at muscle fibre types. So basically, if you have a look at the specification down here, these are the things you're going to need to know about. There are three different muscle fibre types. The first one we have here is a slow oxidative type 1 fibre. Second type of fibre is a fast oxidative glycolytic, which is a type 2A fibre. And then you have a fast glycolytic fibre, which is a third type of fibre, and that's a 2B fibre. So, if I just get you to kind of look at this and think of this for a moment, what this basically means, the percentage or the kind of uh, how much of the different types of fibres you have will dictate the types of activities that you do. So if you're someone, for example, who has a real high amount of slow oxidative fibres, this will dictate a certain activity. It might mean that you're better at certain activities. If you uh, have a high percentage of fast glycolytic type 2B fibres, this might mean you're good at other activities. So what we'll have to do, so just to open you up to kind of things you might be looking for in the exam, is you've got here. So you could get uh, an example, a scenario, a picture um, of a sporting activity. In this case, it's a discus. And the type of thing you'd have to do is ask you to, by your knowledge of discus or a discus thrower, could you identify the predominant muscle fibre type used by a discus thrower to achieve maximum distance? So you will have to to know which fibre type from these three would be used for someone doing a high intensity, low duration movement such as uh, discus. So that's kind of where we're going. At the moment you won't really understand which fibre type would link to that. Hopefully after the next couple of slides you will feel more confident on that. So before we start this then, uh, it's really important when talking about muscle fibres you have an understanding of the difference between aerobic and anaerobic exercise. So a lot of you will have covered this in kind of uh, GCSE biology and uh, you will have covered it uh, maybe GCSE PE but let's just get an idea of what aerobic and anaerobic exercise are before we start to look at the different muscle fibres um, and how they work. So starting off, aerobic exercise then, it's, it's a combination of kind of low intensity and high duration exercise and it, the key thing here it has it, it's in the presence of oxygen oxygen is present because if the exercise is low that means you can breathe therefore you can get oxygen into your lungs now an example of activities like that would be something like marathon running uh, and then it, it, you know if we flip over to the far side or the kind of converse or in contrast to these uh, aerobic exercises, you have anaerobic exercise and this is where you have this kind of high intensity but low duration exercise and and the key thing here is it's in the absence of oxygen so you do something really high intensity before often you get a chance to breathe so you look here for example someone doing a shot put okay so high intensity two to three second duration okay before you get a chance to really breathe and you do not need oxygen to perform that skill so it's massively massively important that we understand the difference between aerobic and anaerobic because depending on whether it's aerobic or anaerobic exercise will dictate the muscle fiber that is going to be predominant when we are doing these activities so for example if we're doing aerobic uh, exercise okay such as marathon running this will need the fiber type slow twitch oxidative type 1 okay so this basically is the first fiber that we recruit and it allows us to perform slow activities and it allows us to use oxygen. Okay, so this is the name. You need to know the name of this fibre. Okay, and then if you go to the far end, just so we can see it onto here, the other fibre for anaerobic exercise, solely anaerobic exercise for high intensity duration, would be uh, this fast twitch glycolytic fibre. Okay, and it's also known as a type 2B fibre. It's, it's the last fibre that you recruit. So if I just get you onto that now, so hopefully you can see the difference in that. So you've got slow oxidative fibres will be used for aerobic exercise, such as a marathon running. Whereas fast twitch glycolytic or a fast twitch type 2B fibre, okay, will be used for things such as shot put. Now, the middle fibre is a fast twitch oxidative glycolytic because this is the fibre that allows you to kind of use, it can be used some aerobic, some anaerobic. So if we have a look at the different examples for this, you'll be fine with marathon running for a slow twitch oxidative type 1 fibre. For a fast twitch oxidative glycolytic fibre, the middle fibre, okay, this will be used for kind of middle distance, but just below middle distance running. Okay, so you've got 800 metres, for example. On top of that, you've got the fast twitch glycolytic fibres. This will be used for the highest intensity work. Okay, so you're looking at things such as 100 metre sprint. You're looking at things such as shot put. Okay, so at the moment, what I'd expect from you is in your core now notes is have know the difference between aerobic and anaerobic exercise, firstly. Second thing is you need to be able to identify 
the different fiber types. Now, you can call them a slow twitch uh, oxidative or a type 1 fiber. You can call them a fast twitch oxidative glycolytic or a type 2A fiber, fast twitch glycolytic or a fast twitch type 2B fiber. Now, I think it's important for now that you have both things on there. Okay, in the lesson we can start to cut this out, but it's really important we start to look at what they consist of because it will help you uh, as we go through. So your first things now, three fibre types, one, two, three, make sure you've got those named and you have a, a corresponding example that links to those and they should be questioned in your Cornell notes. So if we move on from there then, muscle fibre types, what do we need to know? So, obviously, we need to be able to identify the fibres, as I just said, uh, and give a sport an example for each. Okay, so I've done that there, you've had a look at it already. So, on top of that, though, we don't just have to be able to match a, a sporting activity to a muscle fibre type. What we have to do is we have to be able to do the following three things. We have to know the structural characteristics of each of these fibres. So, what does that mean? That means that we need to know, firstly, the size of each fibre, but more importantly, structural refers to what do they consist of? What is within that fibre that allows a slow twitch oxidative fibre to be good for marathon running? And obviously on top of in contrast, for a fast twitch glycolytic fibre, what is in that fibre that allows it to be really, really effective for 100 metre or shot put? So next thing we need to know, we need to know about functional characteristics. So what does each fibre do? Okay, so what is its role that allows them to be so efficient for these different activities? And finally, as you've already done, we need to be able to make sure we can apply to different sporting activities, uh, which you already have started to do. Okay, so that's the focus today. Tonight's screencast is going to specifically look at this. We're going to look at the structural characteristics of the fibres and we're also going to make sure we can apply it on there. The lesson will focus on the functional characteristics. Okay, so let's have a look then. Muscle fibre types, structural components. Now, within a muscle fibre, there are certain structural components. Now, those structural components, uh, some of them will have, a, there'll be a large amount, or there'll be a high amount of these in certain fibres, but there'll be low in others. So what we have to do, first of all, is have an understanding then, if you have a, a, a muscle fibre, any muscle fibre, these things will be in the muscle fibre. How much of them will dictate which muscle fibre you have predominant and which type of activities you'll be best at. So if we have a look, first of all, first thing, that you need to make sure you understand is this kind of structural component of phosphocreatine. So phosphocreatine then, okay, is a high energy compound stored in the muscle cell and it's used as an anaerobic fuel for high intensity energy production. So what does that mean? So phosphocreatine is it's, it's a kind of, as it says, it's a, it's a high energy compound in your muscle cell and basically we can break that, that phosphocreatine down without oxygen and it gives us the kind of uh, energy for really high intensity things such as shot put um, such as a hundred meter sprint such as a sprint start such as a rugby tackle okay so it's really important fuel that allows us to run quickly without oxygen Okay, so hopefully you'll start to see now, when I do each one of these, you might start to think, ah, I can work out which fibre that will be. Okay, that might be the certain, hopefully you'll start to do that, we'll look at it on the next slide. The next structural component is glycogen. Okay, so glycogen, we all have heard, or heard of carbohydrates. And basically glycogen is the way that we store carbohydrate in our muscle cells and liver. Okay, and it, it, the really important thing for this is it can be broken down without oxygen, just like phosphocreatine. So it gives us that high high intensity energy okay that we need for things such as shot put things such as discus and um, that i mentioned before and it's quite interesting of course that glycogen can actually break down with oxygen as well so we'll have a look at that in, in future lessons but for now just to get it as a best fit kind of uh, scenario let's just look at glycogen and look at it as an anaerobic fuel that can be broken down without oxygen next Structural component of a muscle fibre is the mitochondria. Okay, so this is a structure in the muscle sarcoplasm and it's basically, it's, it's like the energy furnace. Okay, so within our muscle cell, we have this kind of this, this structure that allows us to produce aerobic energy. Okay, so when we can breathe oxygen in, okay, this is the structure that allows us to kind of create energy. So it's absolutely vital for certain types of fibres that require oxygen. Okay, require energy, can use energy. Um, um, oxygen when you are taking part in exercise. Next one, myoglobin. Okay, so myoglobin is a, is a protein um, that's found in the muscle and its key role is to basically get oxygen from the blood and take it into the muscle. Okay, so that's a slight typo, that's supposed to go into the muscle, so just change that for me there. So it's a key, uh, it's pretty in the muscle, that's basically 
response for transport oxygen to the muscle cell. Finally, capillaries. So capillaries then, this is a blood vessel that allows oxygen to be transported to the working muscles. So you can see that there. So this basically, you've all have covered this uh, in biology, I'm sure if you haven't done PE. So it's, it's, it's kind of it's absolutely vital when you breathe in oxygen into your lungs, the capillaries are the blood vessel that transports oxygen towards your working muscles. So it's absolutely huge that, you know, if you have these, there's a certain type of muscle fibre that requires oxygen um, to allow us to, to use certain activities or to perform in certain activities, such as marathon running. So at the moment, I think it's just important because this is the first time you do any real stuff, any real physiological detail about what's in side your muscles and how that impacts upon our performance in aerobic or anaerobic activities. It's really important you have an understanding of these terms because you're going to use them over and over again throughout uh, the physiology course. So I suppose now it starts to get a little bit easier now because now we just have to give some structural characteristics of the three muscle fiber types. So if we've got our kind of thing here and what we need to do now is apply them, you now might be able to pause the screencast and think, do you know what? I think I know what there'll be a high level of back on the other slide in here. Uh, you might be able to already work out the structural components or structural characteristics of the three different muscle fiber types. Let me start you off there. So if you have a slow twitch uh, oxidative fiber or type 1 fiber, for things such as marathon running, there will, th these fibers will have a high mitochondria density. There will be lots of mitochondria which will allow aerobic energy production for things such as marathon running. Next thing, it has high myoglobin stores. So it has lots of myoglobin, okay, located in the muscle cell, which allows the oxygen to transport and bind to it and to go into the muscle and allow us to do aerobic activities such as uh, marathon running. Next thing, it has a high capillary density. Okay, so it has lots, it's a dense kind of formation of capillaries which allow oxygen to be transported into our working muscles. So you can see there, I mean, those three things are oxygen based, they are aerobic based, and they are things that are within the muscle, the structures within the muscle cell that allows us to do these kind of uh, aerobic activities with slow twitch oxidative fibers, okay, such as marathon running. Now, in terms of the size of this, because we are doing things slowly, okay, but, you know, working at a low intensity, the fibre size is small. So there's a small muscle fibre size, or a small neuron, if you remember from the motor neuron, uh, from a motor unit lesson, there's a small neuron size. It doesn't need a big size because it's only doing low intensity movements. Now, if we go up to the far side, I always think it's good to do a direct contrast. If you've got a slow twitch oxidative fibre, Okay, so then we have a look over to here, we go, right, now we're looking at the fast twitch glycolytic fibers. So these things, because they're high here, it's very unlikely they're going to be high over here. So now we need to think of what's inside, what do a fast twitch glycolytic fiber consist of? Well, the first one should be relatively straightforward, because you can use it from here, or one of them will be using that. So fast twitch type 2V fibers, when we're doing a 100 meter or shot put, we're looking at these. High PC stores, okay, so high phosphocreatine stores, because they get high energy compound can be broken down to give us anaerobic energy okay then we have high glycogen stores because it's a glycolytic it's a fast twitch glycolytic okay then finally these will have a large neuron size because they have to be extremely high intensity and explosive in their force so that's how that works okay for that one there so you can see now fast twitch fibers okay they will have the following so glycolytic fibers will have high pc high glycogen large neuron size now the ones in the middle the fast twitch oxidative glycolytic these are the kind of mix of, of slow twitch and fast twitch so if we go and have a look on here these have high pc stores because it's still a fast twitch fiber it's still a fast fiber so then we go on to here it also has high glycogen stores again because it is uh, it's a fast fiber and then it also uh, the thing that kind of comes across from this one is it also has a high capillary density and finally it has a large neuron size still because it's still a fast fiber okay so the only thing that comes across from that side is high capillary density if you don't feel comfortable at the moment thinking that's too much to remember just keep it to high pc high glycogen large neuron size now in all the times i, I i've you know been teaching a level p which is you know coming at 12 years there has never been a question on the fast twitch oxidative glycolytic or a 2a fiber here so it, it's one it's just worth making sure you understand that the majority of the structural characteristics are 
the same as they are for a fast twitch glycolytic. Okay, make sure you make good notes in this. The lesson will be focusing on looking at the functional characteristics of the fibers. Thanks for your time.